Welcome to Wealth Wisdom. If you have ambitions to achieve financial success, please leave yes in the comment, and we are here to help you obtain insight and build wealth. The book we are going to share today is NFTs are a scam slash NFTs are the future by Bobby Hundreds. The Inside Story on NFTs Every year, Collins Dictionary compiles a list of words and phrases considered contenders for word of the year. In 2021, some of the words that appeared on the shortlist were double-vaxxed, hybrid working, and climate anxiety. But the word of the year was an easy choice. It went to three little letters that seemed to be on everyone's lips, NFT, or non-fungible token. That year, over $40 billion worth of crypto transactions were recorded. The artist Beeple broke records with his digital collage every day, the first 5,000 days selling for over $69 million at an art auction. And in the space of three months, NFT trading increased 700%. By 2022, the crypto slump left the market for NFTs looking far less robust, and yet creators and collectors of these digital assets continue to proclaim that NFTs are revolutionizing the ways we create, invest, and interact online. So, what's the real story? Are NFTs a fad? A fraud? The future? Let's find out. Before we continue. If you are interested in this topic, please consider subscribing and give us a thumb up. Let's continue. WTF are NFTs? Before we dive in, here's a quick rundown of everything you need to know if you're new to the weird, wild world of NFTs. To start, what the heck is a non-fungible token anyway? Put simply, it's a certificate confirming that you're the sole owner of a digital asset. That digital asset can be one of many different things, a piece of original art, a collectible trading card, an investment that behaves like a stock, or a membership card that lets you accrue loyalty points or gives you access to an exclusive club, to name just a few. Often, an NFT will perform more than one of these functions. For instance, have you heard of those Bored Ape NFTs that every second celebrity seems to be purchasing these days? They're unique works of digital art that also grant their owners access to an exclusive digital space called the Yacht Club. So, a receipt? Is that really all an NFT is? Well, yes. The easiest way to think about it is like a proof of purchase, which is securely stored on the blockchain. Okay. And what's that again? Blockchain is a data storage system, where data is stored in so-called blocks, kind of like the cells in an Excel spreadsheet. These blocks are encrypted and linked together in a huge database that's totally decentralized and spread across multiple networks. This means it can't be tampered with, someone trying to change any data in one location would immediately be detected by all the other networks that store that same data. Because all the transactions are encrypted, they remain anonymous. But the blockchain itself is transparent, so individual transactions can be easily traced. And all of this has to do with something called the metaverse, right? The metaverse, not to be confused with Facebook's MetaVenture, is a version of the internet augmented by virtual reality tools. People can access and interact in virtual worlds, including selling and purchasing goods like NFTs. A lot of experts think the metaverse, which is still in its nascency, will become the next big revolution in digital technology. So, can I buy an NFT? Sure. But not with cold, hard cash. You'll need a form of cryptocurrency, like Bitcoin or Ethereum. NFTs are typically released through their creator's web platforms, and they tend to sell out quickly. There's also a booming secondary sales market on auction sites like OpenSea. And are NFTs a secure investment? Nope. In the few short years NFTs have been around, the market for these assets has proven volatile, a number of high-profile creators have already withdrawn from the scene, and a number of scams around the buying and selling of NFTs have been reported. But this doesn't mean investing in the digital assets you love or value won't pay off big time in the end. It's still early days for NFTs, the risks are high, and so are the rewards. Are NFTs a scam? Lots of people are skeptical about NFTs. And they have good reason to be. To begin with, NFTs are sketchy by association. They're traded using cryptocurrencies, 
which are notoriously unregulated, scam-prone, and volatile. Like many new industries before it, from gold mining to the dot-com boom, crypto offers opportunities to get very rich, very fast. Conversely, fluctuations in the market mean the numbers in Bitcoin wallets can go from seven figures to single digits with little to no warning. And many cryptocurrencies, remember OneCoin? Are little more than glorified pyramid schemes. The crypto market is also easy to manipulate through things like pump and dump schemes, crypto influencers hype up various currencies to their audiences, and then cash out as soon as their followers have driven the price up. It isn't just crypto that's vulnerable to scams, there's a lot of fraudulent behavior in the NFT space too. Ever heard of a rug pull? That's when creators pre-sell NFTs, only to disappear before coming through with the goods. Phishing scams create links to fake NFTs in a bid to separate prospective buyers from their personal details, which they then use to access Bitcoin wallets and other personal accounts. And, as with the IRL art world, the market is flooded with counterfeit NFTs, which are all but worthless. What's more, crypto is seriously bad for the environment, although recent developments in blockchain technology are trying to fix this. Massive computing systems are required to create and maintain blockchains. These systems are powered by fossil fuels in enormous quantities. Bitcoin mining in the US alone accounts for 40 billion pounds of carbon dioxide emissions. NFTs are undoubtedly implicated in this environmental damage. Finally, there's the pervasive perception that NFTs are, essentially, worthless. And in a way, they are, when you get down to it, they're strings of letters and numbers encoded into a massive online database. That's it. Why spend any money at all on an NFT, let alone the eye-wateringly high prices that many popular NFTs command? It might help to think of NFTs in the same way you think about traditional art. Now, you may not think a doodle of a chimp smoking a cigarette by Yuga Labs has the same artistic merit as a sculpture by Louise Bourgeois or a painting by Frida Kahlo. But the reasons these pieces are valuable commodities are actually similar, an NFT, like any other original artwork, is valued for its aesthetic qualities, for its rarity, for its uniqueness, and for its collectability. In the same way that billionaire art collectors can drop seven figures on the latest piece by Damien Hirst and a sneakerhead won't chapter at spending upward of $1,000 on a pair of shoes, NFT investors see inherent value in investing large sums to purchase pieces of digital art. Still confused? Well, to recap, NFTs are new, unregulated, environmentally damaging, potentially sketchy, and sometimes scammy digital assets. In spite of this, lots of creators and investors are really excited about them. And they might be onto something. Are NFTs a revolution? Guess what? You're a digital artist. You might not think of yourself as such, but if you've ever posted to Facebook, composed a witty tweet, uploaded a picture of a sunset to Instagram, or filmed yourself doing a TikTok dance, then that's exactly what you are. The difference between you and a big-name digital artist like Beeple? They get paid for their content, and you don't. But don't be fooled, the content you're creating for those social media platforms is making money. Your content, and content like yours, keeps other users on these sites. In turn, these users attract advertisers, who pay huge amounts to the sites in order to target their products to you and other users. Why shouldn't you get a cut? NFTs allow you to copyright your content and assert yourself as a digital creator. Take Sean Williams. He's the creator behind a piece of cryptomedia called Idiot, a picture he took of a hole he accidentally kicked in his wall, then duct taped a frame around. Idiot sold for 7 Ethereum, which comes out to about 12,000 US dollars in 2023. That's just one story, the NFT revolution enables all kinds of artists to copyright, package, market their work, and potentially get paid good money. Let's be real, the image of the starving artist is not romantic. Creators need to eat. Okay, so NFTs are good news for creators. But what about the buyers? Is a digital snapshot of a hole in a wall really worth 12 grand? Why would anyone buy that? Well, why does anyone buy anything? 
Why pay hundreds of dollars for a white t-shirt that has a red box with the word Supreme in it, when you can get a perfectly good white t-shirt for 10 bucks at Target? But maybe, why does anyone buy anything, isn't the answer you were hoping for. Let's try again. Some people buy NFTs, because they're inherently excited by digital art and see its aesthetic value. Some buy NFTs because they've seen how prices can skyrocket and imagine they might be a good investment. And lots of people buy NFTs because they recognize that we spend a large proportion of our lives in a digital space, they get more value out of hanging a piece of digital art on their Instagram page than in their living room, and in wearing a custom fashion item in a video game than while walking to the store. To be honest, the distinction between real and digital life just doesn't seem as marked as it once did. We maintain friendships over coffees and over text messages and Zooms. Outside, we stretch out in the park, inside, we tend to our rose bushes and plant carrots in Animal Crossing. We use filters to change our digital appearances, post black squares to affirm our political affiliations, and order meals to our homes through virtual shopfronts like Deliveroo. In other words, we do just as much online as we do offline. The metaverse isn't coming, it's already here. At the same time, digital life is seeping into real life at warp speed. That's why brands like Balenciaga are designing Fortnite skins, why Nike has dropped a digital range of sneakers, why concert promoters are releasing NFT tokens as tickets to IRL concerts, and why NFT trade shows and conferences pull together enthusiasts from all over the world. So, while some skeptics think NFTs are a scam, the true believers have a different take. They hope that we're on the cusp of a new digital world. One where creators will take back control of digital media from Silicon Valley Brothers. Where artists can get paid for their work. Where ownership is decentralized and democratized. And where normal people can have a direct influence on their culture. Are NFTs the future? Whether you're just learning about NFTs, considering investing, or have already amassed an enviable collection, you probably want to know the answer to one key question. Are NFTs here to stay? No one knows what the future is for NFTs, things can change quickly, especially in the digital space. Trends come and go. New platforms, functions, and communities appear as if out of nowhere and can evaporate just as quickly. But sometimes, that far-fetched, hard-to-grasp new thing turns out to be both revolutionary and long-lived. Think email, social media, and the internet itself. There are some predictors that NFTs may be here to stay. To start, they're attractive to creators. NFTs cut out the middlemen, like agents and dealers, and let creators market their work directly to the public at the price point they feel is fair. What's more, in the current model that key trading platforms have committed to, creators get royalties from every sale, not just the initial minting, that's NFT speak for the first sale. This means that they get a cut of every resale. And if their work goes up in value between sales, they still stand to benefit. NFTs are attractive to investors too. They're increasingly seen as a cutting-edge way to diversify investment portfolios. And while it's not guaranteed, once in a while an investor hits the jackpot when an NFT rockets up in value. There's no limit to their exclusivity. Yes, NFTs are valuable because they're exclusive. But that doesn't mean they're in short supply, unlike other valuable goods like, say, caviar. Basically, if creators are smart and drop their work in frequent but limited ranges, they won't flood the market and can continue creating, producing, and selling. Some NFTs are likely to become cult collector's items, or even acknowledged artistic masterpieces. In the same way that Van Gogh's work wasn't appreciated until after his death, it will take time for certain NFTs to emerge as especially coveted, admired, or rare. But somewhere out there, some lucky investor may have already acquired the NFT equivalent of those famous sunflowers. Of course, NFTs won't last unless creators, investors, and trading platforms commit to building and maintaining a sustainable digital ecosystem in which NFTs can thrive. And that's where a lot of prospective investors get spooked, until now, spaces like NFTs, crypto, and blockchain haven't been considered sustainable or permanent. But look where the money is, despite reported teething problems, Facebook is continuing to pour money into its meta project. 
Nike, Disney, and Starbucks are all doubling down on their investments and endeavors in the metaverse. Some of the most powerful and profitable businesses in the world seem pretty convinced that the metaverse, cryptocurrencies, and NFTs aren't just here to stay, they're going to revolutionize the way we live. Are NFTs the real deal or just a passing fad? It's too soon to tell, but if you're willing to place a bet either way, now's the time to do it. That's the end of today's sharing. If you like our content, please give us a thumb up and share it with your friends. See you next time.